Our next speaker is Ian Quinn of GraphCore. He's a member of the Silicon team. Uh, he's going to talk about constrained random stimulus generation in Python. Um, he's a uh, SOC verification team lead at GraphCore, has been a member of the Silicon team since its inception, and has previously held design and verification roles at NVIDIA, Pikachu, and ARM. So over to you, Ian. Thanks, Mike. Um, so, um, yes, as Mike says, today I'm going to talk about um, an in house constrained random verification environment that we've built based on Python. I'll show you some examples of um, how it can be done and some of the advantages and disadvantages we found. Um, to give some context, this is a high level view of the first chip we produced, the Colossus Mark I Intelligence Processing Unit, uh, IPU, uh, taped out in 2018. Um, the IPUs um, a massively parallel processor array of around 1200 microprocessors, uh, an all to all communications fabric, 12 Gen 4 PCIe ports providing uh, communication with XX6 uh, host CPUs and for connecting IPU devices together. This chip is aimed at uh, machine intelligence and artificial intelligence workloads. Um, it uses 16 nanometer process and it contained 23 and a half billion transistors. So at the time, we taped it out. It was one of the biggest uh, ever logic devices produced. Um, the verification of this device, we we leveraged Python heavily in a number of areas. One of being one of them being to create verification stimulus. Um, we've got an in-house processor verification environment built in Python, and this talk is going to focus on uh, the SOC verification environment covering the logic moving uh, data on and off the chip. Um, so why would you use Python to create verification stimulus? So the question we asked ourselves when we set out on this project was whether we could create a verification environment that was crafted to our specific requirements and use Python to give ourselves a, an advantage. We weren't trying to re-implement UVM. We wanted to create something tailored to our specific requirements. So verification engineers spend a lot of time writing tests. Could we use the high level language features of Python to make ourselves more efficient? Um, when we started initially at GraphCore, we only had three or four verification engineers. But we did have a lot of software engineers who were competent in Python and C++. So could we make it easier for them to help us out in verification without having to learn system Verilog? Um, we were also at that point limited uh, in terms of funding and, and simulator licenses. So we wanted to be able to leverage open source simulators uh, such as Verilator. And lastly, the verification environment did need to scale to a very large chip. Um, and we wanted to be able to use profiling tools and understand and optimize performance. This is a, a simplified view of our verification environment, showing just the sort of stimulus side of it. Um, when running a simulation, both the Python interpreter, interpreter and the Verilog simulator are running together, and they communicate via the DPI. Uh, the Python side is generating transactions, and the DPI is used to pass those transactions to drivers and coordinate the execution for a common API used by all the drivers. Uh, this approach, so you do require a thin C++ layer to bridge between the two languages, for which we use um, Scython or Boost Python. The driver BFMs, uh, written in System Verilog, they convert a transaction object passed via the DPI to a bus protocol. They're gener generally very lightweight, um, but they can, uh, if needed, be UVM, full UVM agents and let the test rating take place at a higher level of abstraction where um, we, we can reuse elements of a UVM block level verification effort at a chip level where appropriate. Um, and the, the idea, this is designed for speed. So while the, the Python generates a set of transactions and then it will go to sleep while only the system Verilog simulator is executing the DUT and the drivers. So uh, that's the only process running at that point. Um, some other key features of this um, approach. The test sequences are written independent of the underlying transaction type, so they're naturally reusable uh, across test benches and at a different level of abstraction. I'll show you some examples of that later. Um, so this means that the output of our test generation process can be either transaction objects driven into the DUT via system Verilog BFM, or even assembler or C for a micro embedded microprocessor. Um, so this allows true level, true chip level constrained random testing where the code executing on the embedded processor is coordinated with external BFMs or UVM agents. 
because the stimulus generation is in Python, you can do things like run independent of the simulator on a reference model if you have one. You can save the stimulus offline and replay it later when there's no randomization, so that can be very quick in the simulation. This is a big advantage for chip level verification work where you've potentially got very long running tests, um, but they can be very quick to develop on a reference model. Um, and it works well with continuous integration workflows. Um, so the remainder of this talk, I'm going to focus on how you actually go about generating constrained random stimulus. So um, there are a number of open source constraint solver libraries available to make this straightforward. So the system prolog and Python examples I've shown here are equivalent. The Python example on the right is self-contained and you can run it as is in the Python interpreter once you've got the library installed. The library I'm using here is a Python constraint, but there are a number of ones available. So a class can be created, defining any number of random variables. And each variable has an associated sequence of values it can take, which is called a domain. And it's passed as a, a range here for each uh, variable. Constraints are defined as functions that can take uh, any number of variables as input. And they just simply return true or false to, to indicate whether the constraint's been satisfied. You pass that to the uh, constraint solver library. And then you just call the get solution method, and that returns you a, a randomized object. Uh, one of the issues with the CSP libraries is handling of wide bit vectors, which require very large domains. So um, because the solver needs to expand these sequences internally and pick a random point within the state space, it can lead to very long solution times if you just pass in uh, extremely large domains. The example here is a 16-bit data bus. Um, the solutions that we use are shown on the right. You can either just use the uh, Python's inbuilt random number generator library, or if the variable forms part of a constraint, for example, it must take specific values in some cases, you give the CSP library a choice of a random variable or the spe uh, specific number. So um, this example shows how you can provide something similar to the system Verilog's randomized with feature in Python. Um, if you want to fix a particular value when creating a transaction, this can just limit the domain passed to the CSP library to a single value. Obviously, system Verilog is very uh, expressive in this term, so you can pass in uh, quote, uh, a range of expressions very succinctly to the with part of the, the randomized call. Um, because Python supports functions as first-class citizens and also as anonymous functions, um, you could build a more expressive API here than I've shown here, quite straightforwardly. Um, so how do you generate streams of transactions? So the solution we um, use is to use Python iterators, which an iterator in Python is an object which can be iterated over by another, another object to produce a sequence of items. So like you, do it by implementing the iter magic method. Um, they're very memory efficient because they only create one transaction at a time regardless of the length of the iteration. Um, the code example here shows a, a generator which is a specific type of iterator. which use the yield keyword to return values um, and this retains state between calls and returns control back to the caller after the yield statement has been executed. And it does require a, a caller or a dispatcher sequence to advance the generator. Um, so after the, the generator function has been advanced, the, it, it's paused at the yield statement until the caller comes back to advance it. The two example classes shown here, the first generates a stream of transactions um, uh, with an incrementing address. It shows how the address state can be uh, retained between calls to the iterator. And the second uses the same Python iterator structure to combine the output of a number of other sequences in a random order. Um, so, and the, finally, the last line on that code example is a, is a good example of a high level language feature in, in Python where everything is an object. So, we're using the inbuilt Python random choices to perform a weighted choice across just a, uh, a number of different sequences. Choose the next sequence to pick an item from. Um, Python is dynamically typed and it allows duck typing, meaning that it only really cares about the attributes or methods that an object implements not its actual underlying type. So for us, this allows you to write an abstract test sequence where the transaction type doesn't matter. It can be passed in when the sequence is actually used in a test. So as long as you use a consistent attribute or method naming scheme, 
um, the sequence will accept any transaction class. Another important Python feature shown in this example is that the, the argument passed into um, this init function in the code example trans type is a class definition. But since everything in Python is an object, even classes, you can pass them around in function arguments. So an abstract sequences uh, can be used to create stimulus can be injected at the most appropriate point for a test bench. So you're only simulating what you need to achieve your test goal. Um, Python has um, an inbuilt pseudo random number library, which contains a lot of useful functions. Um, I've used randint and some get ran bits in, in earlier uh, slides. Um, there, and there are functions that operate on lists or sequences of objects, um, and perform weighted choice or randomly shuffle the order of a list or take a sample from one. Uh, one thing you do have to uh, handle, ra uh, handle manually in Python is the seeding of the RNG, whereas this is built into the system Verilog simulators. Uh, and uh, an issue that we hit with um, the Python in terms of uh, randomization and uh, determinism is that the ordering of some of the data types is undefined. So for the same seed, you could potentially get a different result if you use the set or, or dictionary types on Python too. This is easy to handle when you know about it, but something you need to be aware of. Um, another thing you need to handle manually in, in when doing this approach with Python is random stability. It's a feature of system Verilog is generally taken for granted. But it's an essential part of the LRM and would make a verification engineer's job very hard without it. It essentially means that when you're developing tests and running them repeatedly and uh, tweaking the code, if you change uh, some code in transaction class A or sequence A and rerun with the same seed, it doesn't affect the randomization of any other transactions or sequences. And uh, you do need to handle this explicitly in Python, where you need to give each object has to have its own RNG instance and seed it in a deterministic way from its parent. Um, it's a process referred to as hierarchical seeding. You need to build this into your uh, base classes. So in summary, I tried to show how um, it is possible to create a constrained random stimulus in Python for a modest amount of development effort and complexity. Some of the advantages, um, as I see it, are uh, the producti producti productivity gains of using a high-level language. Um, no need to recompile your system Verilog um, when you change uh, the test, because Python is interpreted. Um, and the ability to run tests independent of, independently of the RTL, which is a massive productivity improvement for, for large chip-level tests. Uh, it lets you find goof bugs in your tests in seconds rather than potentially waiting hours for an RTL simulation to complete. Um, providing simulator independence and uh, allowing open source simulators to be used, which often uh, the open source simulators might not support uh, the test bench side of system Verilog. I also tried to show some of the disadvantages, particularly around the in indeterminism of some of the data structures on Python. Um, debugger failing constraints can be tricky. Uh, depending on the CSP library that you're using. And um, you do need to generate this boilerplate code to interface Python and System Verilog um, yourself. But in my opinion, these issues are um, unique. They are unique to Python, but nothing particularly onerous, and they are more than um, outweighed by the advantages uh, that Python provides. That's it. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you.